In Mr. Bush's statement this evening, he referred to the immense suffering of Mr. Libby's wife and children, and no doubt it was immense. In our fourth story tonight, the president seems to have forgotten someone else's suffering, the victims and her families and their countries. Mr. Libby was not convicted of leaking the identity of covert CIA operative Valerie Plain, but he was convicted of obstructing the investigation into who had. She was his victim. Her torpedoed career was a victim, and so too were members of her family. She was targeted in the first place because her husband, former Ambassador Joe Wilson, dared expose disingenuous arguments for the war in Iraq. We spoke to Ambassador Wilson shortly after Mr. Bush's commutation announcement. Ambassador Wilson, thanks for joining us again tonight. Good to be with you, Keith. First, can you share the reaction you and your wife had upon hearing this news this evening? Well, on the one hand, uh, there's nothing that this administration does that surprises us anymore. It's, it's corrupt from uh, top to bottom, and I think most Americans should understand that beyond a reasonable doubt now. On the other hand, of course, as American citizens were outraged that the President of the United States would short-circuit the rule of law and the system of justice and really just repudiate um, uh, uh, everything that uh, we stand for as Americans, including uh, the decision by a jury of Mr. Libby's peers, uh, confirmed by the judge in the case and reconfirmed by the Court of Appeals. In many quarters, this is going to look like a quid pro quo, that Mr. Libby would have felt free to act as he did throughout this series of events, because perhaps all along he'd been promised some sort of get out of jail free card. Uh, do you uh, place any credence to that theory? Absolutely, absolutely. The president himself acknowledged in his uh, in his statement today that Mr. Mr. Libby was guilty of serious crimes, and then he makes himself an accessory to the obstruction of justice by the mere act of commuting the sentence. So that now, Mr. Libby, there is under no incentive whatsoever uh, to tell the truth to the prosecutor, uh, to remove that sand that uh, Fitzgerald said that he threw into his eyes, or to do anything to lift the cloud uh, that Mr. Fitzgerald says continues to exist over the, uh, over the office of the vice president. In a typical case of uh, sentence commuting, a commutation case, the felon is supposed to cooperate with the authorities. No indication that that has happened. Where do we now turn for answers about how this all happened? To, to Patrick Fitzgerald, to Congress, to your civil suit against Mr. Libby? Um, I, well, I would add to all three of those um, the, the, the necessity for the president now to come clean with the American people. He's been hiding behind this notion that he didn't want to get involved in an ongoing investigation until now. Uh, he has now short-circuited that investigation. He owes the American public some answers. Uh, I would uh, hope that he would instruct the special counsel to release all the information he collected during the course of his, of his investigation, beginning with the president's own uh, interview with Mr. Fitzgerald and the vice president interview with Mr. Fitzgerald. And if he fails to do that, and I have no expectation that he will, because he is corrupt to the core, uh, I believe that the Congress should uh, begin to investigate this matter. Obviously, the onus of this is going to, to fall, has fallen today already on the president. Uh, he is the one who ultimately made the decision. He has described himself as the decider. But as some of your answers so far have suggested, the role of the vice president cannot be underestimated in this. Do you now, or with, when, when we're seemingly at, uh, at conclusion, although I suppose Mr. Libby might still be pardoned at the end of the administration to, to wipe the record completely clean of what he has done, do you have your, uh, in your mind a timeline of, of what happened and what the vice president's role was in all of this, including uh, this commutation of sentence? Well, certainly there are people who have been looking at the possible vice president's role uh, far clo more closely than I have. Um, but I would uh, in in insist, I think, that the vice president come clean on this, and certainly we expect to um, to ask him some very pointed questions on this in the, in the civil suit. And by the way, people can get information on the civil suit at www.wilsonsupport.org. Ambassador, your wife's identity was considered fair game for this administration to sacrifice for political ends in hopes of, of uh, ruining your reputation and by doing so ruining the impact of your criticism of the start of the war in Iraq. Uh, it has been reported that she was working on the issue of weapons of mass destruction and without commenting on anything classified about what her work was specifically. What message does this gesture today send to other CIA operatives about their expendability, their fungibility within the Bush administration's scheme and vision of the world as it stands. Well, let me say this. There's, there's a lot of questions about, about the underlying crime, et cetera, and a lot of uh, the sort of sect of neoconservatives and their, and their acolytes in the American political system 
um, uh, who have sort of argued that Mr. Libby didn't really commit a crime. But the government official had uh, spent the morning with the Russian military attaché for the express purpose of disclosing the identity of a covert CIA officer. What would Americans call that? We know in America the difference between right and wrong, even if this administration doesn't. Uh, and frankly, uh, I think that uh, for the CIA, its covert officers, and for the agents uh, that are recruited by officers, those who would who would uh, put their lives at risk in order to give us the intelligence we need, will think long and hard about it uh, when they see that an administration with impunity will betray its covert officers, will engage in treason. I would imagine, sir, in conclusion, that many watching this interview share your distress and your anger tonight. Do you have any guidance for your fellow citizens as to how to translate this feeling into some kind of productive action at this point? Well, Congress is on leave all week. Uh, they will be out in the districts, and I think citizens should uh, make sure they take advantage of every opportunity to meet with their congressmen to share with them that America is a country that is governed by rule of law, and we have a system of justice that has been usurped in what I think is, a, is an arbitrary and capricious act by a chief executive who is corrupt to the core and an administration that has demonstrated that it has absolutely no regard for those values that have made this the greatest country on earth for the last 220 years. Joseph C. Wilson IV, our former acting ambassador to Iraq in the wake of the commutation tonight of the sentence of Louis Scooter Libby. Great thanks once again for some of your time tonight, sir. Thanks very much, Keith. Good to be with you.